can be. I'm green. Awesome. Hot dog. Hey everybody, welcome to Monday at Incredible Tiny Homes. What is this, Tom? August 3rd? 3rd? August 3rd, 2020. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Randy Jones. I got the big Tom behind the camera here. Amanda is usually here and she is recovering fantastically of COVID. Yes, she's had it. Um, she took her down about 11, 12 days uh, yesterday. Her lungs were really bad. And <clears throat> we have a health food store over here called the Mustard Seed. And uh, the owner is Walt. And Walt actually got us some uh, mullen leaf extract. You're not going to believe it. One dose of that, she was her lungs felt 100% better. And then today she, she took it again, of course. Um, <clears throat> and she's on the upswing, I think. Actually, she went today to see if she was tested to see if she was still positive or not. So everybody, thank you for caring about her and Alyssa and Alyssa's mom. They're on the upswing. Alyssa never really took it too bad, but her mom was really worse than Amanda. Uh, uh, we had a concentrator there for her and some other things, uh, natural things. Anyway, they're all doing really well. I'm sure on Facebook, you guys have seen all this stuff going on. Amanda feels better. I'm sure she probably posted a little bit more on Facebook. What's but uh, <clears throat> it was called uh, Mullen Leaf, M-U-L-L-E-I-N, I believe it was, and um, Mullen Leaf Extract. And it was a little dropper, and she, she took just a dropper. I don't know if she put it in water or not, but she took a dropper. And that evening and that morning, I mean, she couldn't hardly breathe in. It was just breathing in and she was coughing really bad. Took that the next morning, she felt awesome. She could, you know, wasn't perfect, but she said, oh my gosh, it was awesome. <clears throat> she had pounding headaches. That was driving her insane. And uh, there was a few things, let me see. We'll, we'll get this whole regiment for you. She went through the whole COVID and did nothing but homeopathic remedies. The whole thing. Um, the big thing, you know what took her headache away? Was hot water in her feet and ice cold on the back of her neck and her forehead at the same time for three minute increments. And she did that and it, it immediately let go of the headache. She wasn't, it was, it was about ready to take her out. She had three days of hard headaches until she started that. Um, there was some other, other stuff she had taken. There was a one essential oil that didn't work for her um, actually irritated her a little bit, but she did that. Of course, she was on some vitamin C regimen, uh, turmeric, turmeric, 9,000 milligrams a day, and it was taken at three times a day. <clears throat> the biggest thing I think was the biggest thing that she took was an antibiotic called Alimed, A-L-L-E-M-E-D, I believe it is, or A-L-L-I-M-E-D, Alimed. And Alimed is a garlic, <clears throat> a potent garlic and where the mustard seed gets it is over in Europe. There's only one or two places in the world that makes it that it doesn't go rancid. I guess garlic, when you, when you treat it like they're doing in this liquid form, it can, just, it can go bad really quick. So this is refrigerated. A little bottle about like that is about 150 bucks. But she took a massive, a, a tablespoon now, I might be getting this wrong, but a tablespoon, I know it's at least this, is equivalent to 2,000 cloves of garlic, all right? So she was taking three tablespoons a day, along with the aloe vera that a good friend, <clears throat> now it's a friend from Canada, had sent over. Aloe vera, the lady that sent the aloe vera over, aloe vera, um, fought cancer with it. And also the mullen leaf, the aloe vera and the Alimed is what um, they treat cancer patients here at the Mustard Seed and some other places. So I'm not really uh, knowledgeable about all that, but what was really good is uh, Walt had said, once we get everybody here, he wants to come over and give classes. He wants to come over and inform everybody. So if you're interested in a lot of these things, he's been to Africa and all kinds of um, countries teaching this whole food plant base plus with all the herbs in essence to keep, your, keep you healthy. And he's a, um, <clears throat> a wealth of knowledge, calm guy. And he, um, he went out of his way and came over here. So he's a volunteer fire part of, fire, firefighter in the local area. 
He came over here, we was fighting fires, come over here, brought a concentrator, brought some of this stuff for Amanda, went back, he was doing some calls and coming, you know, so it's a great family, but then he's been to Uwanda, um, I think it's called Uwanda in Africa, <clears throat> and they've had a surge of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and diabetes because of fast foods moved in. Before fast foods, they didn't have any of that. So he went back, he went over there, the government found out about him and called him in and he spoke to their parliament. And not only did he speak to them several times, they called him to come back and they said, now do a protocol which we can follow with our country and we're gonna implement that to our citizens. So now they're implementing a whole food plant-based diet into their country. And I'm sure they're giving incentives about losing weight and all these things. And it's not a big country, but they're able to do that. So this is the guy who's been a part of that. He's got some really great credentials. He's got friends in the medical field in Vanderbilt, uh, up in Minnesota, uh, I think the Mayo Clinic. Some, he, he talks and collaborates with surgeons and people that he's been with for years. So very diverse. So anyway, we were felt fortunate that a lady from Canada called him and said, hey, come over here and give Amanda some aloe vera. Of course, we knew him too, um, but we were just so, you know, go to the hospital and they just sent her home. Alyssa and her mom went to the hospital, sent him home. Not a bit of medication, not a protocol to follow, nothing. It was like, you're on your own. So around here, they must not know much about this disease, you know, or this virus that's coming. So um, bear with me, I'm not medically knowledgeable about any of this stuff. I'll eat some lettuce and rub some Spanish, you know, some lettuce on my arms or something like that. I have no idea. I put, I put coconut oil in my hair and on my skin and I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do good but I really don't know much. But when we get here, Walt will come in and he'll do a complete lecture. And so if you're interested in any of that, I didn't mean get off on a tangent, but I know a lot of people have been interested about what was going on. Um, <clears throat> this house right here, this is uh, Robin. This is Robin's house. Robin called me this morning wanting to know where in the world her house was. And she chewed me up one downside the other. And I said, you know what, Robin, your house is going to be to you Wednesday. So I called John. John, we're going. He goes, yep, <clears throat> we're leaving. So Robin, there you go. You got your house going. I know that you came to paint that house. And Tom threw it in there. And we put you, our painters are way behind. But we went in there and we jumped on that paint job for you. So I think it's pretty now. All right. So we're going to do a few things tomorrow, get it set up, heading out of here Wednesday. Okay, Robin, there you go. Um, we got over here, we got Regina's house. I want to tell you everybody, this was a remodel job. It was bigger than we thought it was going to be. Not the home, but the, but the work that was involved in it. We were thought we'd just tear off the strips and not have to replace a lot of what we did, but we had to completely remove everything in this house, on the outside of the house. And it's been a job. Today we had four, five, six guys on this house. The back's done, the side's done, the side's over there's done. All we got to do is the front here, and then we're going to do some underpinning. And we'll show you how we're going to do that. That's our foam. Punch out the inside, though. Yeah, the punch out's done. Yeah. Yep. I mean, done. we moved the AC unit. You wouldn't believe the list of things she had. Killed it today in there. Yeah. What else, Tom? Well, everything, but we couldn't. Yeah, she wanted the, the toilet moved over an inch and a half. Yeah. That's just major, man. Take apart the whole floor and everything. So yeah, so we didn't move the toilet. Yeah, so she wanted to know if we could do it. We couldn't do that, but ever. And this home was actually built in a workshop that we used to offer where people would come and build their own homes in six days. And she actually, we framed it, and then she came in with friends and family and, and got it done. So um, she came back, said, hey, I want a maintenance-free house, and that's why we got the metal. This was her design, everything on here. Is she wants the horizontal lines, we have to trim out the wall. She came in yesterday and painted her door silver. And then we got some trim around the door, put her light fixtures back on, so we're going to get her out of here by noon tomorrow. We kicked it on here today. Um, <clears throat> so let me show you some wiring and plumbing and what we did today. I think it was uh, kind of a cool learning day because we had one of our partnerships come into town. And the partnership, this partnership happens to be family. It's, uh, it's Greg is, from, is a, my cousin out of West Virginia. <clears throat> and he actually made a big decision about these partnerships. He's been a, a, a bulldozer operator for 30 years and strip mines in West Virginia. He actually could have went back and started strip mining and still running the dozer, but he actually said, Randy, I want to be part of your partnerships. I want to change my life and I want to do something different. 
and he actually went ahead and uh, started a little business. You know, you got to have your company name and all that stuff. And he brought two friends with him that want to pursue our partnership. So he came here today, he got here about 1230 from West Virginia. And this is what we did. Now the floor system was on when he got here, um, but they did all the plumbing. So Tom and I ran through the plumbing. We did some videos so they can take home. We're actually going to keep those videos and use them later on as we're going to put all this tutorial stuff together. So as they frame, as they plumb and wire and everything they do, I'm going to start doing more and more learning videos. And that's going to help us when we do seminars or whatever we do. And we can help you guys if you want to build your own home. But this is mainly for our partnerships. So what we do normally is we start with our, our main toilet. This is the biggest pipe we have. So the only thing we had right here is the toilet. We didn't have anything straight across from it. So what we do is we lay out, we have, we have a toilet, we got a kitchen sink, and we got a shower. That's all we had. But how do you get through these joists? And how do you make sure that it's going downhill? And then you've got these Ys and fittings and all this stuff, right? Well, you got two fittings here. You got to come out the bottom because that's where everything's going to go when you want to hook up to the sewer. So this is a drain line, and these are Ys. I don't think you can see it, Tom, where you're at. You can see them? Okay. You got Ys across. So we always put the drain line in first, and everything. One guy told me, a plumber years ago, said, you know what? Two things you got to remember, right, when you're plumbing. Poop runs downhill, and left's always on the hot, all right? So left is hot, poop runs downhill. So everything here runs downhill. Even this vent, downhill. That drain from your kitchen sink comes across, goes downhill. So we had to make sure it rolls down. So after that, we do our water lines. Now our water lines, this is PEX, uh, a PEX, P-E-X pipe. And we use PEX fittings, rings, and everything on here. So what we like to do, and um, Tom likes to run a trunk line through here, and then we tee off. Off that trunk line, we'll go to our kitchen sink. If there was a bathroom sink, we tee off of that, feed our bathroom sink. Then we come over here, and we come up and we go into our water heater and our toilet. So our toilet sits here and faces that way. So we'll come up and then we've got a water heater. We've got a house over here with a water heater. And so we know that it comes off a certain amount of floor, of our, our fittings and our water. It's about 38 inches. And so we got these drawings so the guys will remember when they're doing their partnership. They know to cut these off, come out at a 90, and they've got their water at 38 inches off the floor. There'll be a gas line also here. So this is for the water heater. They'll tee off, they'll put another tee here after they're framing and that'll feed their toilet. Then we got a water supply here. So what we do is we tee off and this is how you feed water. You hook it to the water hose um, or the city water and it'll feed right in here and feed your whole system. That over there is your kitchen sink. It comes up about 24, 26 inches off the floor. And they'll 90 come out. And then your shower. So their shower, with no sink on it, we always come from the outside 81 inches and we set our wall right here. So we know that our water lines are going to take a 90, right? Because we're going to spray foam this tonight. And then they're going to hold this up. They'll cake at 90, come straight up. Now they're in their wall. So then they put their diverter valve, which we call valve. We've got our water line in. They got here at 1230. First one they've ever done. Five o'clock, they were done. And this is the first one and they had to teach and learn and do and you know get used to the tools and the environment and all this stuff so then we said let's do some wiring we're trying to put all of our main wire in our floor system now before if you don't put all those main wires all those wires would be in the wall right constant there's a, like a spaghetti in the wall but we only use a two by three two by four so it's two and a half inches thick and you start drilling through all that and then you put a staple in and then you put a nail to hold your, your sheeting on and in your wall inside, you can, Tom, is it not terrible to put a nail in a wire? Yeah, very terrible. And we've done it. The oh, we've done it and we hate it. Travis wants to know if you're sick, Tom's like getting cough. <clears throat> machines don't get sick. Do <clears throat> no, machines don't get sick. All we need is a change of oil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think maybe working seven days a week. I was yeah, just, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. We worked solid Saturday and Sunday. I mean, I'm talking 10, 12 hour days, both days. So I'm probably just a, needing a tad rest. Yeah. But no, I feel really good. I really do. Thank you for asking though. Travis, Travis is on me, isn't he? He's on me. All right. So what we do, I wish I had that booklet here. This is a book. And this is my chicken scratch. I'm going to show you. I asked Tom, I said, Tom, how many circuits do we have in this house? 
And circuits means these wires right here, all right? And a circuit, if you guys go to your panel box in your house, you'll see you got a, um, um, a circuit breaker, right? A little switch in that big panel box. Well, every one of these wires has a circuit breaker on in the panel box. So that's Tom, I said, how many circuits do we need? He said, we need one for the microwave, one for your AC mini split. You need one for, you need two in your kitchen. You need one in the bathroom, one for, uh, for the living room and all, all the plugs. You can put up to 12 devices on a living room circuit. One for the refrigerator, one for the loft in case we do run into more loft. We, that was kind of an extra one. And then the stove top. Now the stove top needs a 10-2 wire. So I wrote that on there. This footage over here is the microwave is 70 inches off the floor. So I said, let's, let's pull it off the floor, eight foot, 96 inches. The AC, we pulled 10 foot because it's gonna go up in the gable and go out with a disconnect. So we wanted to make sure we left 10 foot out. Then in the loft, we went to the back door and we left five foot coming off the floor and I'll show you where that's at. So I wrote them down. I didn't have the red dots because the red dots is they were completed. So we know where the micro, we know where the, the panel box is gonna be and that's right here. So the panel box on the drawings, if you get a bathroom wall right here, panel box is gonna be right here. So. We went ahead and we made this little box here, okay, this little blocking, we drilled all our holes to it. So let's take we, take, we take this wire and it says kitchen, all right? There's two kitchen circuits. So we run a wire through here and we drilled about six holes and you can only put two wires in each hole. That's code. So we run a wire through here and we come up over to our kitchen. We could have two wires. So we're in another one over to our kitchen. And so we'll take another wire and we'll label it kitchen, all right? We'll take another wire and we'll label it bathroom. And we'll label over here, we'll say microwave. So we label these wires and we label the other ends of them. So the microwave, let me show you over here a little bit. So this is our kitchen. <clears throat> In our blueprints, it's an RJO. So when the door folds to the right, I want to switch right on my left. So this is gonna be a hot leg. It's gonna have electricity to it. And there's gonna be a two or three gang box right here. Now we can run electricity to this. You can feed the kitchen. But what I did is Tom, Tom and I talked and he said, we'll put a, a, actually a leg right here. It's a junction box and a switch. It'll go to the loft and we can put anything we want in the loft. But this is the edge of the door. Right here is our refrigerator. We know our fridge is gonna be here because we got a two foot section on our blueprints that says the fridge is here. The stove top sits above the refrigerator. That's our stove top. Over here, this is our two kitchen circuits, right? Now the kitchen, they're 40 inches off the floor. So I made them a little bit longer. I know we're wasting a little bit of wire because they're kind of gonna, you know, we don't need that many, but I'd rather have more than enough. And then this is we used because we're gonna have this as our microwave, all right? The microwave is 70 inches off the floor that way the plug is behind the microwave and not beside it. So we've got all that labeled. So now we get our kitchen, we got our cooktop, we got our refrigerator. And then we come down here and all those wires have labeled, it says microwave on it, run through those holes and out. So when we put our panel box, you just put your panel box and I'm gonna show you all this. You can put your electrical in the bottom of your panel box. You take a breaker, you put the breaker in and you put the wire in the breaker. Okay. This one here is our living room, all right? So if our living room is here, I'll come, I got, let's say I put a little box here for a plug. So when we put a plug here, well, I want five plugs in my living room, right? Well, each other plug is called a fixture, right? Device. Or a device, yeah. a device. So what we can do, you can have 12 devices, right? Onto this one circuit. So what we'll do is when we're in the wall, and I'll show you later on as we build this house, you, to put, you put another little plug box here and you loop it to here. Well, I want four more. You run your wire through your wall. So the only wire we got through the wall now is that one wire going from this device to that device and that device, wherever we want. And we got to keep it under 12 devices on this one circuit. And it says living room and it says living room on there. So it's, when it comes down to it, the process is pretty simple, especially in these. So I've got this living room going to the panel box with a breaker. 
that says living room. Out of here, I can run 12 devices. I mean, plugs, lights. Um, what else, Tom? There's plugs and lights, really, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the bathroom has its own circuit, and that's over in the corner. So what we did is we run one circuit to there. The bathroom, everything in the bathroom by code has to be on its own circuit. We put a ground fault in the box, right, Tom? So then what we'll do is we'll run the lights. We got a fan, a GFI, a plug for the um, toilet. If they ever want one, we always put one in. Let me ask you, Tom, when we put a GFI on the outside of the house, is that a separate, how does that work? No, it goes off the bathroom circuit. So we can pull that off the bathroom circuit? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we got a plug behind a toilet for a, for a uh, compost. Yep. We'll pull off of that and run a plug for the uh, exterior, GFI. exterior GFI. And I was just wondering, you know, I wonder if we should run a wire all the way down and we got another GFI out front. Well, it can just go off the living room circuit and just put a GFI on it. So you can run off the living room circuit. Just run a, yeah, run a hot out there. And, and put a GFI plug outside. Yeah. And then also we're running one under the house and that will just be drilled straight down. And that's for you all. We started to implement that in case you wanted to put a heater after you put skirting around your house totally will heat your floors instead of putting wood, you know, putting uh, heated floor systems in. Any questions? Nah, they're just going on about ANSI code and NFBA RV. Okay, those. great, great, great. It's all good. Yep, good. Um, and then with the ANSI, there's other things that we have need to implement, and we'll tell you more about that later, but this is just basic wiring of a tiny home. Yeah, ANSI is anything over eight and a half foot. Yeah. So if you're nine foot <clears throat> wide, has to be ANSI, then Eight and a half is NFPA. Yep. RV motor. I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but the ANSI is above eight and a half foot. Yep. Anything um, eight and a half foot below is NFPA yep. certification. That's everybody. That's this is RV motor. RV motor home is NFPA. Yep. So, but that's our wiring and plumbing. So tonight, when Jesse gets back, he went to get him a bite to eat. He's going to come back and spray foam this. Take him an hour or less to do this, and they're ready to go in the morning. Or if they want to keep working tonight, as partnerships do. They're here to bust it. They may put the floor down and start framing tomorrow. Really don't know what they're gonna do, but we'll have the tongue and groove flooring that goes directly on top of this. They glue it, nail it, and um, be framing tomorrow. Okay? Any more questions? Nope. Not so far. Hey, I wanna uh, say we had a, uh, our partnership Saturday from 10 to 1230. And uh, what a great time we had. I don't know if the couple's back to Idaho they were here, they had on video, and um, man, they, they loved what we did, they loved what we seen. I probably got about 20 emails in there that I need to get to. Today has just been gang busting with this going on. We have just been crazy here getting things out. Are we trying to get Regina needs to leave tomorrow at noon? We gotta get Robbins out of here. There's three or more other we were trying to get a hold of. And I mean, crank, I mean, we were, we killed it today. I think we did really good. And so, Thank you for your patience on your home. As you can see, we try to bring every day. We'll bring in here, I know uh, Amanda, and uh, um, let's see, I wanna put, um, as soon as Regina's is out of here, we're putting Amanda, let's talk to Amanda today, and we're gonna put their home over here where Regina's are, okay? So um, we'll be showing them, that's a big 28 foot craftsman, and it's, it's gonna be beautiful. Big. Yeah, big, big, we, you know, we're gonna put Mike and Chuck and about four guys on there and uh, Regina's over there waiting on me. Um, so I'm gonna, I wanted her to look at her house. So we're gonna go over there. She's gonna get her house tomorrow, so we wanna make sure we're doing everything she wants us to do on her home before she leaves. So, all right. Let me show you Robin's house over here. I think it's kind of cool. It's been outside. And uh, Regina, I'll be right there. Okay. Look at him. What are you doing in there? What are you doing in there, Ace? What are you licking your chops for, buddy? There's nothing in there. Look at him. Come on out here. Come on. Come on. Never, never painted one green like this before. And this is a bay window. This is our first one with a big bay window like that. Um, I like it. We were talking today. Uh, one of the guys said, what if you put a tongue box and put a bay window and, and, and you know, all that. Where well, our tongue boxes are like 1,500 bucks. That bay window with the framing, the windows, the trim, the insulating, the trimming on the inside and getting it all done, trimming the bottom of this, all this done, you're probably looking almost a week 
for one man. Easy. They're expensive. I mean, I don't know if, if we even charged enough. I, if, if we had to do it again, what would you charge for Bay Window Lake at, Tom? $2,500. At least $2,500 just for that bay. And then our, our tongue boxes are $1,500. So it's just, they're a lot of labor. You can actually, you can actually put trim on a door and a window and siding and gutters and everything on a house by the time you build that bay window right there. There's just a lot of labor involved in that. But it looks gorgeous, you know? So this is getting ready to go Wednesday. We'll show it again tomorrow, but I told the homeowner we'd walk through here a little bit. I want to show you what's going on. We're cleaning, scraping windows. And yep, cleaning, scraping windows. We're taking the tires off, checking all the axles and everything down there as, as we do. As you guys, we've walked through this before. You can see there's just a range top. You can see the 70 inches is where we put our plug for our microwave. You got your sink top, and look at the big bay. Is that it? Just makes it feel bigger in yeah. here. And all three yeah, all three of them open. Is that not amazing? That one cranks. You have to crawl up there to get it done. What are you doing, buddy? You gonna sweep for me? <laughs> yep. And here's your kitchen cabinets. And I always point out, Rob's just a great cabinet maker. He does really good. Any any compliments, these guys? If you want to send compliments to them, man, they would love it. You can see how they're and tendon and man it's just awesome how they make these things yeah isn't that beautiful yeah and all the drawers everything's full wood there's no nothing particle board in these it's solid wood cabinets solid wood countertops with the you know the butcher block up here is your mini split a little bit of storage loft i tell you please do not store anything in front of that mini split or you're going to have problems heating and cooling your house i really don't even like you know storage is up here but it's nice to have this place for lights that she can off their kitchen now under here is your refrigerator and this is point you know you can do anything you'd have a tall fridge if you wanted to but if you did you can have a switch here right i didn't know i have electricity on this <clears throat> so she got an under counter fridge here's drawers over here look at the drawers in this place one two three four five six seven drawers in this little bitty kitchen right all right, so we go from the door, the kitchen, living room area. We got the stairs that are going up. And this is kind of like a halfway easy access loft because you can walk up here. The dormer, everybody, is bigger. It's back this way. So when you walk up, you don't hit your head on the dormer. Yeah, just trying to do as much room as I possibly can. Yeah, now that's extra because if you, you want this, the dormers are eight foot long. But if you want this, we got to add two or three feet to that dormer to bring it out. All right, so you got to remember that when you're putting stairs in a house, you got to have a headroom and make that dormer bigger. So it's going to be it's going to be more expensive. Underneath here is all open, okay, for storage. All the V groove trim, as you can see, uh, this door. Everybody builds their doors different, but it's just got plain boards on the outside. It's picture framed out. I love to always point out, look how we're doing our trim, how everything fits in here. And I try to think, when we go through these houses, Tom and I and, and other guys that want to inspect what we do, we try to look at every option, everything that's going on in here, and we try to get it as best we can. In here, you've got a cabinet above that was added in there that Matt put in, in the closet underneath to hang clothes, a shelf, and this is all just natural wood. So this, all this can stay the way it is, or they can finish it and paint it. There's the sink. What's going on? Battery's good. Battery's going low? Oh boy. We got a sink, shower, stackable washer and dryer, and your toilet. So this is a big bathroom, man. This is probably half the house, almost half the house is in this bathroom. Here's your, let's see the lights. There you guys go. You got lights in here, man. Then the stackable washer and dryer. So, Robin, you got a nice home. We're gonna get it on the road for you Wednesday. So you can have your house. I think it's, where's it going, Tom? I think Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Yeah, it's not far. Cool. All right. Ace, let's go, buddy. Come on. I'm going to show you from, from those guys. Tomorrow Indiana. is what I, I guess I was wrong. Indiana, Indiana. There she told you. Um, so what I wanted to do from here tomorrow, so my cousin who's in the partnership now, they're hoping that they'll get at least this far or further tomorrow. They got to put their floor down and then they got to build their framing 
and then the, you know, the roof system and all that. So stay tuned all week. We're going to show you their partnership and how they're, what they're getting done all week. We'll introduce you tomorrow. They're just, they're probably, they're getting some dinner and getting some showering up and stuff like that. This is their first day. So it was kind of hectic. You can tell they were kind of nervous and trying to figure everything out. But once they get their feet under them, they'll be here. I think they'll be kicking it pretty good. Now they're, uh, two of them are full-time carpenters. My cousin, like I said, he's um, part-time carpenter, but he brought his friends that been in carpentry forever and they're gonna partner up and they're partnering up to be a partner, you know, to, to build our homes. So hopefully t uh, tomorrow they'll get this done, if not more, and we'll show you the progress. I think that's about it. My phone's about ready to die. It is. I miss Amanda. She's not here. Usually we charge everything up and going. She may be back here shortly. Once we get her, uh, her test back that she's negative, we'll have her back doing our show. And um, if you guys could see, I talked to Tom. We always shake. Our hands shake all the time. So Tom's got that hammer. He's got it both together, trying to keep it from shaking. And that's, I'm the same way. But uh, Amanda's really found a way of being able to read your comments and talk and carry on with me. And, so it's uh you can tell after a while and how how long it takes to really get into that swing of things and understand stuff you know but hey if you want to know more about our partnerships go back to the saturday um uh, video it was like two and a half hours long but i think we covered a lot of great information that if you want anything to do about partnerships if you know anybody that that wants to be in one i talked to a guy last night out of oregon a friend of, of a friend of the ith here has a friend in oregon and it was their nephew and he was an engineer him and i hit it off i just can't wait to meet him uh he's got he's a full-time contractor and i'm finding some contractors are calling us and they are so busy but it's killing them they're running the roads the money the stress the finding guys and jobs and per permits and all that stuff is is this wears you down and when they see that they can do this at home it's like man i want in all right Everybody, thank you. I'm Randy Jones with Incredible Tiny Homes. Sorry to cut this short, but our battery's going dead. Tom's got to get home to his five teen kids. Any, any nope. comments? Just tell everybody to hit the like button. All right, 60 cool. 60 out of 300, hit the like button. Yeah, that's right. Like, 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 like. Everybody, see if you can. I appreciate that. I don't know how all that works. But I really don't even worry about it. I just come on to let you guys know. But if you guys want to hit like and you want to push up, uh, you know, be a member, a subscriber in the, in the uh, notifications button. You'll know when we come on. It's crazy when we come on. We try to wait till the end of the day, but wow, we got to get home. Tom's, Tom does. He's got a house full of kids and, uh, and a big family. So, all right, I'm going to get with Regina. If you guys all know Regina, I'm going to talk to her about her house so we can get out of hers tomorrow at noon. We may come on and show you that thing leaving. She's excited. So everybody, this is a working place. We busted here. There is no sitting around. And it's still not done till today and the sun's still alive and we're moving all right so thank you for all your good thoughts positive comments you've made um we're not perfect we do make what we do 850 industrial road come right here robin said anytime you want she said you invited me to say anything i wanted to say to you i said yes you did and she let me have it this morning and i said yes ma'am that's my policy let me have it all right so, and we take good compliments too. Let's try to show the 40 foot container tomorrow and Regina's finished. All right, that's what they're requesting. We're gonna show Regina, 40 foot container and probably a couple more that's gonna get out of here. Yeah, yeah, we got three leaving this week, I think, yep. plus Regina's. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Reach out to Amanda if you can on Facebook, say hi to her and Aly Alyssa and her mom. Thank you very much. I'm gonna get Ace, bye.